Hi and welcome back to another Basepack 10 digitizing tutorial. This time we will make a cording device design together. And herefore I already prepared a design. So an inside shape with a nice frame around. And on top of that, I want now to create some cording device. Now, first of all, you have to know where on your machine is your EP or your cording device. Normally it's on the needle number one, so on the right hand side. In some cases it's on the left hand side of your machine, so on the most left needle. As I said, I already prepared here a frame with needle number three. The fill I made with needle number two, because now I changed to needle number one, on which I will have my cording device. Important is that this icon here is switched on for the insertion and we're on the last stitch. I will now insert here a thread trim and change the needle number one. Go to my new position, set the first stitch, and now you have to insert also a machine stop. You still have by hand to switch on your cording device. You have to insert a stop so that the machine waits for you to, to lower the cording device. Now a few important rules for the cording device. Never go backwards with your stitches. Imagine the cord, if there are stitches in, don't go backwards. It will like throw the cord around and it won't be able to catch the cord. So always in forward direction, set now the first stitches. Make the first ones a bit shorter so that there are more stitches in the beginning to hold the cord. That's a bit too short. You can see that here on the right hand side. Okay. So a standard stitch length to fix the cord would be like two millimeters. Now depending on the thickness of your cord, in, in some cases you might need to make the stitches slightly shorter or longer. So I've got here now this swirl and I want to put the cord in this well. So I choose my running program, use my drawing tool and select my swirls. I want to use the total curve. I'm happy with that, so I say enter. I'm in manual punching, so now I want to go back to the object with backspace and change my stitch length here to two millimeters. Now I press enter and enter again, and I'm back in manual punching. I now need to, just like in the beginning, fix my cording with some small stitches. So as you see, I always go in a forward direction and never go backwards. The same goes for very tight curves. Imagine you have a very small, tiny curve and the cord has no space to get around that curve. The stitches will, will be outside of the cord and the cord won't be able to catch. I would recommend also do some trials on the machine. So it very much depends also on your cording size and structure, how you have to make your stitches and how tiny your curves can be. Before I go back to the start point, I will now need to insert another stop so that I have time to manually lift the cording device again before it jumps back to the start position. So if I now have a look at the trivia, you can see here on top of the shape, the, the patch, you can see the cord. So it's actually very simple. Just make a few trials with different sort of cords and yeah, enjoy making some creative work. I thank you very much for watching and I speak to you on the next show. I'm looking forward to meet you and take care. Bye bye.